Hello and welcome to Aston's Vintage Technology Workshop. Today on the bench we have a sports Sony Walkman in a very sorry state. I always wanted one of these and finally got one for Christmas. As you can see, the first thing that fell off was the front display panel. This is down to the adhesive just drying out over the years. I can't help trying to peel some of it off, but I'll have to leave that for a bit later on. Overall, cosmetically, it's not in bad condition. However, it is suffering from aging plastics cracking here and there. But most surprisingly is the headphone waterproof plug is still in excellent condition. But as you can see, the DC socket waterproof plug has gone hard and just crumbles away. I'll have to try and make a replacement, but more on that later. First thing to do, before we can even attempt to take the chassis out, is to remove this tiny little nylon washer. If you're not careful, this will disappear and never be found again. So I've found that putting a piece of sellotape over it and prising it off with a sharp knife stops it from being lost. Now you can lift out the protective internal door cover revealing the first flexible cable which needs to be removed. Next are the two screws holding the chassis in, allowing you to lift out the cassette mechanism. Notice the two pins that hold the battery cover on have been lost, as has the spring. Yet again, I will have to make something later on. Be careful as there is another flexible cable underneath. You can see in this shot that the headphone socket has been forced in and broken the two retaining lugs. Not only that, but you can see that the battery corrosion has also affected the negative connector. I think you can probably spot that the belt has decided to stretch and wrap itself around the motor shaft. Time for a new belt and a clean up. I just happen to have a new old stock drive belt from Sony but I also decided to get myself a brand new belt from Deck Tech. On closer inspection, they seem to be fairly similar sizes, and the thickness is correct. I've thoroughly checked over the capacitors fitted to this unit, and surprisingly none of them have leaked, and they are all well in specification. This is quite unusual because the majority of these Walkman models have had their capacitors leak, so I shall probably end up replacing them with something a little more solid state to be on the safe side, but that will be in a future video. OK, time for a quick clean up of the drive pulleys. Thank you. 
and on with the new belt. The motor speed adjustment is here and is accessed right next to the tape when it is all assembled, making life a bit easier. This liquid plastic weld is absolutely invaluable for plastic parts from this era, and this bottle has repaired countless hopeless cases. Here, I'm dipping the screwdriver into the liquid weld and putting drops of it onto the plastic to melt them back together again. Here's a close-up. Not perfect, but as strong as it was the day it was made. The next step involves removing the volume control knob and the cover. Normally during repair, this would be discarded and replaced with a new one. However, since that is no longer possible, I'm going to have to make a tool to remove it without damaging either parts. A quick and dirty tool that anyone should be able to make would be one made out of an old baked bean tin or similar. Obviously, be careful as everything here is now very sharp and about to be made even sharper with a file. Just file away the edge so that it will slip easily between the two layers of the volume control knob and the cover, bending to shape with tweezers. Then prise gently up, hoping not to scratch or damage either piece. Finally, remove the screw and the volume control. Now the audio circuit board can be carefully removed by gently pushing the clip to allow you to release it from the case. I then tried cleaning most of the acid damage off with alcohol, but unfortunately in this case it wasn't working, so time to resort to something a bit stronger. Time to clean things up with some white wine vinegar, maximum strength. As you can see, it is bubbling away the corrosion quite nicely. A few dabs in the cabinet as well to dissolve the corrosion and mop it all up with a kitchen towel.
A quick close-up of the spring shows it's as good as it's going to get. Okay, next up is all that old sticky tape. This is going to be a pain to remove as it probably just doesn't want to go. You can scrape most of it on the main body, but don't scrape the window panel, as you'll take the printed surface straight off the perspex. These two bits were stuck fast, so I left them alone. I've cut a sheet of double-sided adhesive tape to roughly the right size, but first I need to make sure that I cut holes for the transparent areas of the window. As I was recording this, I noticed that the picture quality was going downhill, but I carried on, not realising that the image sensor in my camera was about to fail. And then it died. The only thing I had to hand nearby was my iPhone, which I quickly elastic banded to the tripod. So apologies for the slightly poor quality of the video. Finally, the front panel gets stuck back where it belongs. Right, now it's time to put it all back together again. In goes the battery pull, then the circuit board, making sure it clips in correctly and that the battery contacts slip into their slots. Now for the headphone socket. I've cut a little square of cork out to fit between the post and the headphone socket to give it some extra strength. Now in with the tape movement. Wait one second, I forgot to plug in the other ribbon cable. In with the top ribbon cable. And finally the protective cover for the door.
on with a little split washer. in with the screws A quick clean around the volume control area. And on with the volume control knob. In with a small screw. Don't over tighten this as you can damage the volume control's threads. Make sure to align the numbers on the cover with the edge of the case. And now that part's done as well. Now time to repair the battery door. I've cut parts off a similar type of plastic which I kept from an old CD player. I then shaped the parts round with a sharp knife and plastic welded these to the battery door. For the spring material I needed something strong but lightweight and the only thing I could find that wouldn't put too much pressure on the door was a sewing needle threader. I flattened the wire out with some needle nose pliers, bent it round them three times and now we have a spring. Refitted the door by lifting the mechanism slightly and considering everything it works quite well. This next bit was messy. I needed to fashion a new rubber part for the DC jack on the bottom of the Walkman. I found a rubber foot from an old router that I had in a jar of junk bits and pieces. Using a sandpaper nail file I sanded the rubber piece down until it was the right height and shape for the job. A quick test of the speed shows that in fact it's spot on even after all these years. quick blast of 80s nostalgia which I unfortunately I'll have to talk over to save getting a content match. <laughs> and finally a quick test to the radio. Another classic Walkman saved. Now, a question you might ask is was it all worth it? Well, that sort of depends. Firstly, this was a Christmas present this year with the express hope that I could repair it. Secondly, I've always wanted one of these since I worked at Sony in the 80s. So as far as I was concerned, it was worth it to me. However, considering the monetary cost and the potential complexity of repair, such as making your own parts, Unless you really want one of these for your collection, it might be difficult to justify. Thanks for watching.